Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Douglas Sordo, um, and I work for a company called Caladrius Biosciences. It's great to be with you today. Uh, and as you can see, the title of my talk is somewhat provocative. C34 cell therapy regenerates microcirculation and reverses ischemic tissue damage. And what I will try to do in the next 15 minutes is convince you that that title is justified by data that's been generated in randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled studies. Caladrius is a public company, so I have to make this statement about forward-looking statements. The pro-angiogenic potential of CD34 cells was discovered in 1997 by Takeyuki Asahara, who was specifically searching for a circulating cell that was capable of maintaining and replenishing the microcirculation, his underlying hypothesis being that there must be a way that the body can repair the microcirculation uh, in various situations. And he identified the CD34 cell as a candidate for that role. He documented, as shown here, in early clinical studies that labeled human CD34 cells migrated into areas of ischemic injury and appear to contribute to and stimulate the regrowth of damaged microcirculation in those tissues. And with that observation, a number of investigators and laboratories began to explore the possibility that these cells could be used therapeutically. Alfred Coker, who was working at Columbia University at the time in Silvio Atescu's lab, was the first to publish a preclinical model, in this case, a myocardial infarction model, in which he used human CD34 cells to test their ability to attenuate the damage caused by a heart attack. And this first slide shows panels of histology from a control animal on the left and a CD34 treated animal on the right. And what you can see are examples of capillaries that have penetrated and apparently repopulated an area of fibrotic tissue damage. And you can see red blood cells in those capillaries indicating that actual blood flow has been restored. With that replenishment of the coronary microcirculation, the scar size in the treated animals was reduced. You can see in comparison to a saline control, a CD34 depleted population, and then saponous vein endothelial cells as another control, the CD34 positive cells had the greatest effect in reducing scar size. That resulted in better preservation of left ventricular function. Again, you can see the same pattern here where the CD34 treated animals recovered with the best heart muscle function compared to the other control groups. Our laboratory was also interested in developing this cell as a potential therapeutic. And we wanted to explore another question as well. That question was whether or not it's important to purify the CD34 cells, or could one simply use the mobilized apheresis product as a therapeutic without purification? And so this experiment was designed by Atsuko Kawamoto, uh, comparing different doses of CD34 cells with different doses of mobilized mononuclear cells that contain the C34 cells, but without purification. And in one case, dose matching uh, the C34 cells. So we're comparing an equal dose of cells in a purified or unpurified setting. And in every case, the purified C34 cells yielded a better result, even when the same dose of 34s was administered in the unselected mononuclear cell population. In this case, we're looking at heart function. Fractional shortening is a, a higher number is better. Regional wall motion score, a lower number is better. And again, the, the selected CD34 cells did the best job of preserving heart muscle function. After those and a number of other preclinical studies, we embarked on a clinical development program using the CD34 cell to regenerate the microvasculature in tissue that, that had been damaged by ischemia. The largest program 
is in Norda, no option refractory disabling angina. This is actually an orphan-sized population with very severe disabling angina. These patients have exhausted medical, surgical, and other options and remain disabled. Over 300 patients have been enrolled in randomized double-blind studies in that program. In the United States and Japan, uh, studies have been done in patients with critical limb ischemia, showing reversal of critical limb ischemia after a single dose of cells and reduction in the need for amputations. Most recently, we've begun exploring the use of these cells in patients with coronary microvascular dysfunction, a very logical target of this naturally occurring pre-programmed microvascular repair cell. There are a number of patients who don't have clogged arteries, if you will, the, the usual atherosclerosis, but who have disease in the microcirculation that results in chest pain, heart attacks, hospitalizations, and so forth. So we've targeted those patients in the pilot program. And then lastly, others have looked at these cells in congestive heart failure. I just wanted to show this array of, of studies that have been done. This is actually not a complete list, but it gives you an idea of the different indications that have been explored. Let's talk first about Norda. What is its pathophysiology? Well, our hypothesis is that the ischemia that results in Norda is due to coronary microvascular insufficiency. Why do we think that? Well, the macro vessels, the big pipes, the coronary vessels, have been either opened or bypassed. And attrition of the microcirculation is actually very well documented in chronic ischemic cardiovascular disease. And so putting those two together, it's logical to assume that the microcirculation in these patients is a problem. The corollary of that hypothesis would be that a therapy targeting regeneration of the microcirculation should improve symptoms, function, and outcomes in these patients. So the clinical development program in Norda has included a phase one study of 24 subjects published in 2007 a phase two study of 168 subjects published in 2011, and then a phase three study that was planned for 444 patients, but was terminated prematurely by the previous sponsor due to a strategic change on their part. Nevertheless, the partial study was published in 2016. The largest completed study was the phase two. This is the design of that study, 168 patients aged 21 to 80 years, with class three or class four angina. That means chest pain with modest or minimal activity, failed best medical therapy, no longer candidates for surgery or angioplasty or stenting, documented ischemia, so a lack of blood supply to viable myocardium, and very limited exercise capacity. And as you can see here in the double-blinded study, patients were randomized to receive one of two doses of their own CD34 cells delivered directly into the myocardium versus a placebo, which considered of the cell, cons consisted of the cell diluent without the cells. Here's kind of the punchline, if you will. So after a single administration of cells in these really sick patients, uh, the treated subjects appreciated a significant improvement in mortality. This is all cause mortality. And you can see that those curves instead of getting closer over time, or seem to be getting further and further apart over time. In addition to living longer, patients experienced a significant reduction in chest pain that lasted for at least two years of follow-up. And in addition, the patients appreciated a significant improvement in exercise capacity. So they went from being severely disabled to being not disabled by virtue of being able to increase their total exercise time by over two minutes, which may not sound like much to the average person, but in these patients, the, it's the difference between sitting around and actually being able to go out and engage in normal activities. So that's the Norda program. So what's the mechanism of this CD34 cell therapy in this setting? Well, we hypothesized earlier that the ischemia in Norda is a result of microvascular insufficiency. So a therapy targeting regeneration of the microcirculation should improve these symptoms and function and outcomes in these patients uh, if, if that's the real cause. Now we have evidence that the application of a microvascular repair cell uh, 
in double blind studies results in objective evidence of improved function, symptoms, and survival in these patients. So I think we can conclude that microvascular regeneration by these cells is the physiologic mechanism of action uh, of the cell therapy in ischemic tissue. Others have observed uh, that this population is actually orphan-sized. So as defined with these severe symptoms, unremitting, exhausting all other therapies and being disabled by the Institute of Medicine's definition of cardiovascular disability, the prevalence is somewhere between 26,000 and 52,000 in the United States. So a truly orphan-sized population. Others have looked at the universe of evidence that has been generated in this program. Uh, and this was done independently of any of the uh, prior investigators. And they concluded that intramyocardial CD34 cell therapy was superior to placebo in improving the risk of all-cause mortality, angina frequency, with an increase in exercise time without a significant increase in adverse events. So looking at this in totality, um, with a prevalence of 26 to 52,000, randomized blinded trials that have included greater than 300 subjects, this represents up to 1.2% of the prevalent population of this condition in the United States. With significant improvements in mortality, engine, and exercise capacity, one could ask, whether continuing the conduct of clinical trials that include a placebo arm is rational, or should another approach such as an accelerated approval be considered for this minimally manipulated autologous cell therapy. So food for thought. I wanna move on to some other evidence that has been generated in patients with peripheral artery disease. So the Rutherford scale describes the progressive severity of peripheral artery disease. And we're gonna concentrate on patients with critical limb ischemia, Rutherford four and five. So ischemic rest pain, the patients need to take a narcotic to relieve pain, or Rutherford five, tissue loss, including focal gangrene. So we've targeted those patients in studies here in the United States and in Japan. The diagnosis of critical limb ischemia is very severe. 20% of patients die within a year, and another 35% require an amputation. Putting it into perspective, critical limb ischemia is more deadly than most cancers. As you can see here, the mortality scale is on the left. And the uh, you know, unpleasant combination of incidence and mortality, only lung cancer beats critical limb ischemia. So this is really a bad diagnosis for a patient. Our colleagues in Japan have conducted a number of clinical trials, and this is a panel from one of the published papers showing that a single administration of CD34 cells results in a reduction in pain, improvement in perfusion, improvement in oxygenation, improvement in walking distance, and a reduction in ulcer size. And you can see the nice healing that occurred in this area of gangrene on this patient 12 weeks after a single dose of cells. In another study, uh, the same investigators showed that the conversion of patients from critical limb ischemia, that is Rutherford 4, rest pain, or Rutherford 5, a non-healing ulcer, to non-CLI or becoming CLI-free was around 80% by six months, and that that condition, that reversal of CLI, persisted out to four years, again, after a single administration. Here in the United States, we're able to show that a single administration of CD34 cells resulted in a dose-dependent reduction in the need for amputation. So reversal of CLI and reduction in amputations with single administration CD34 cells. I mentioned the condition of coronary microvascular disease. That condition results in ischemia despite the absence of obstructive coronary disease, so-called ENOCA. We measure microvascular function in these patients by measuring coronary flow reserve. And you can see, with a CFR that is reduced less than two, the risk of major adverse cardiac, cardiac events is roughly quadrupled compared to patients who have a more normal CFR. 
We conducted a single administration study in patients who had angina with no obstructive coronary disease and an abnormal CFR. You can see that the patient population is early middle age and predominantly female, which is an interesting aspect of this condition. A single administration of CD34 cells resulted in a significant in increase in coronary flow reserve, basically the normalization of CFR after a single dose of cells that was accompanied by significant reductions in chest pain frequency and an improvement in overall function. Lastly, our colleagues uh, in Slovenia conducted a study uh, assisted by the folks at Stanford in patients with dilated cardiomyopathy. Single administration of CD34 cells in patients who were referred for a heart transplant in, into Lubanya, Slovenia. So Dr. Vertovec was the, uh, the, the, the key investigator in this study. A single dose of cells significantly improved left ventricular ejection fraction, and that benefit was persistent out to five years. Similarly, the biomarker of physiologic heart failure, NT-proBNP, was significantly reduced after a single administration of CD34 cells, and that persisted for five years. And lastly, cardiac mortality survival was significantly improved after a single dose of CD34 cells in these patients with dilated cardiomyopathy followed out to five years. So what's the message here? CD34 cell induced microvascular repair and regeneration has now been established in multiple human indications. This has been associated with true disease reversal as measured by clinical endpoints, function and symptoms. Disease reversal unburdens patients of their disease, allowing them to lead more happy and productive lives and will unburden society as well. Bottom line, restoring health is more cost effective than managing disease. Thank you for your attention.